He's got swing in his rhythm. He's got swing in his beat. Swing is the kind of music make you pat your feet, put on your dancing shoes, throw away your blues. Today we're swinging Frankie's way. Put those hands together, let me hear the beat. Beat the music from your head to your feet. Ain't no other way. Swing is here to stay, cause today we're swinging Frankie's way. Hey, put those tootsies to the test. It's the sound that we love best. If it's got a swinging beat, make you pat your feet. Hey, turn around. Now, get down. Ain't no other way. Swing is here to stay, cause today we're swinging Frankie's way. Everybody, this is Big Daddy, band leader, bass player of the Swingy Billy Bros Swing Orchestra, and you are tuned on my YouTube channel, listening to the program All That Swing, music, culture, and history of the 30s and the 40s. I'll do the best I can to entertain you for the next hour while listening to either known and unusual swinging songs. The main focus is on the swing craze, but we will move from the early 900 to nowadays in order to have a a wider sight from the roots of jazz to the evolution of swing music and dance. This particular program that you will be listening to for 36 episodes is part of the Swing European Network project co-financed by the European Union. The Italian Swing Dance Academy, whom I am a board member, represents Italy in this three-year project that has 13 partners from 11 different European countries and whose main focus is on their artist mobility in Europe. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get started the episode number 21 with the great Cab Calloway and Hey Now, Hey Now! Walking up the street, act big and bold But deep down in my pockets, I had no gold Was looking kinda sad, when before my eyes Was a million dollar bill that must have fell out the skies I said, hey now, hey now Took this million dollars and looked for more Got halfway up the block and I took it real, real slow And much to my surprise, I was not right out When I met a little chick who knew what life was all about I said, hey now, hey now
I've got the things I want plus a great big car And every day I'm getting more popular So use these magic words that can see you through When you ain't got no goal and you don't know what to do Say hey now Hey now Hey now Alright, the great Cab Calloway, 1946, A Now, A Now, a great song, great band, and now let's step to 1949 with another great band that achieved success later than Cab Calloway, but stayed on for a longer time, and I'm talking about Lionel Hampton Orchestra, the name of the song is uh, Amps Gumbo. Hoy, hoy, it's the house of joy You better come on in and dig my boy I say a ham's a wig, you ought to dig Just in case you didn't know Here's Lionel Hampton's gumbo And that's for sure One, two I want Washington apples, Philadelphia scrap Wild about the sauce and baked beans That's a dish No, you cats ain't never seen Says I'm a whole potato Bound my tomatoes Crazy about my Tennessee greens Group little dish Better get some Jersey cream Okra from Oklahoma Some from Arizona Texas give you cows and corn Peaches from Georgia Oranges from Florida Niagara gives you water Potatoes, tomatoes, peas and beans Then you add your turnip greens That's ham gumbo from way down in New Orleans Lionel Hampton. And now let's go from the West Coast to the East Coast with the great, the great, larger than life, Fat Swaller. More than 50 years after his death, Thomas Fat Swaller is mainly remembered as a great musical humorist. However, his talents were far wider ranging than his than this rather one-dimensional assessment would suggest. Waller was one of the finest of all jazz pianists in the stride style, as well as a brilliant songwriter who numbered such classics as Amy's Behaving, Honey Sack Rose, I'm Crazy About My Baby, among his compositions. Fats Waller's father was a preacher at the Baptist Church in Harlem, and it was there that young Thomas learned to play the organ. An outstanding musician, while still a teenager, at the age of 15, he won a prize in a, an amateur 
piano competition. His first professional work was a cinema organist accompanying the old silent films, but he soon switched to the vaudeville stage. There he quickly established a reputation for the quality of his piano playing and the boisterous nature of his personality. In the late 20s, Warlock collaborated on the songs for the famous black stage reviews Keep Shuffling and Hot Chocolates, as well as playing in the pit band. And he was the master of William Basie, Count Basie. He taught Count to play the organ and the piano. Although Waller had became well known through jazz and theater work, it was not until he began a long series of recordings for the Victor label in 1934 that he achieved the real celebrity. Looked down on by jazz purists, the discs made by Fats Waller and his rhythm had extraordinary appeal for the general public who treasured the pianist's riotous sense of comedy which involved the sending up most of the lyrics he sang. Even his own songs were not immune from this treatment. His innate sense of fun was always paramount in numbers like the big hits My Very Good Friend, The Milkman, and I'm gonna sit right down and write myself a letter. The sides also included some excellent instrumental solos from Waller and the members of the band, but it was his singing which claimed the lion's share of attention. Waller's lifestyle was every bit as expensive as his considerable girth. He was never likely to survive into the chorus old age. A true bon vivant, he lived life to the full. His insatiable appetite for food, drink, gin was a great weakness, and other good things was legendary. Waller suffered several health breakdowns, which he unwisely attempted to alleviate by interspersing hard work and compulsive roistering with 48-hour boots of sleeping. It was all to no avail. Waller was only 39 years of age when he boarded the train which was to take him to New York from an engagement on the West Coast. It was from L.A., LA to Chicago actually the train and uh, uh, already ill a succession of all night parties had not exactly improved his condition he died on December the 15 1943 just as the train stopped in, in Kansas City for heart attack so Thomas Fats Waller was a unique figure in musical history. There is no doubt that his natural gifts properly used would have ensured him a place in the pantheon of immortal jazz musicians. But by following his chosen path, he gave enormous pleasure to many more people than he would have had he concentrated on more esoteric brand music. He thoroughly enjoyed himself and that enjoyment was marvelously communicated to the people. Now let's listen to Your Feet is Too Big. Fats Walla. Who's that walking around here? Mercy. Baby powder, baby elephant powder, that's what I call it. Say, up in Harlem, at a table for two, there were four of us, me, your big feet, and you. From your ankle up, I'll say you sure are sweet. From that down, there's just too much feet. Yes, your feet's too big. Don't want you cause your feet's too big. Can't use you cause your feet's too big. I really hate you cause your feet's too big. Yeah. Where'd you get them? Your girl, she likes you. She thinks you're nice. Got 
what it takes to be in paradise. She said she likes your face, she likes your rig. Man, oh man, them things are too big. Oh, your feet's too big. Don't want you cause your feet's too big. Mad at you cause your feet's too big. I hate you cause your feet's too big. Shift, shift, shift. All your pedal extremities are colossal. To me, you look just like a fossil. Got me walking, talking, and swalking Cause your feet too big, yeah Come on and walk that thing Oh, I never heard of such walking, mercy Your, your pedal extremities really are obnoxious One never knows, do one? The great, the great and unique Thomas Fats Waller with Your Feet is Too Big. You can find a, uh, a movie where Fats Waller is singing that song. It should be Stormy Weather, 1943, just right before he passed on the Super Chief train from LA to Chicago. And now let's move to 1938 with the Count Basie Orchestra and the song Mama Don't Want No Peas and Rice and Coconut Oil. Old. 
Mama Don't Want No Peace and Rise and Cognate All Oil. Count Base York is a 1938. And while you're listening, watching to All That Swing by Big Daddy, music, culture, and history of the 30s and the 40s. So, in the previous episodes, we've been talking a lot about the Savoy Ballroom. And uh, we will talk now, right after the next song, about the clubs that were in New York before the opening of the Savoy. So, talking about the clubs that they were there in the teens of the uh, previous century, or last century, in the teens and the early 20s. And uh, even about the man who made it possible in a certain way. Now let's listen to the house band of the Savoy Ballroom. The Chick Web Orchestra led by Ella Fitzgerald because we're talking about February 1940 and Chick Web passed on June 39. The name of the song is Sing Song Swing. <laughs> Chop a dee chop 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 stick. Chop a dee chop 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 till six. Chop a dee chop 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 still sing. When Charlie Jingy make you sing song swing. Charlie Ching make you sing song swing. With a tingling on the ding dong ding. With the tingling on the ding dong ding, make you plenty sing song swing. Chop a dee chop 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 sticks. Chop a dee chop 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 till six. Chop a dee chop 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 the thing. When Charlie Chingy make you sing song swing. Foo young foo. Make a doodle do with a toot or two on the flute bamboo and the doodle do and the tingling. Make you plenty sing song swing. Chop a dee chop 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 stick. Chop a dee chop 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 till six. Chop a dee chop 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 the thing. When Charlie Chingy make it sing song swing. Fitzgerald and the Chick Webb Orchestra with Bill Beeson on drums replacing Chick Webb. Sing, song, swing, 1940. And now, and now, okay. So we've been talking about the Savoy Ballroom and uh, naming some other ballrooms of the swing craze era. Now let's see what happened before the Savoy Ballroom era. We've been uh, uh, naming uh, the mayor Fiorello La Guardia that in 1935 was able to uh, to set up uh, in a certain way the Harvest Mumble for the very first time. So it was really uh, for it. 
because he was uh, he came from a musical family a musical environment and uh, he knew that the music could give something to the people there, there just have been uh, had been the Harlem riots in 1935 when the uh, depression exploded because it arrived in Harlem a little bit later than in the other uh, boroughs because Harlem was uh, sparkling with clubs and everybody was bringing money there but at a certain point the depression arrived even there so who was in uh, New York as a mayor before Fiorella La Guardia what happened uh, all these clubs that were uh, formerly and uh, I mean, effectively, not formally, effectively, owned by the mob, by Italian, Italian American, and Jews, uh, mobsters, most of them, clubs that uh, used to have uh, bands and musicians, artists, anyway, performing there. So this man was Jimmy Walker, and that's what he said: a reformer is a guy who rides through a sewer in a glass-bottomed boat. From the sayings of former Mayor James J. Walker of New York. And he could on occasion put on a solemn face and be as dignified as Buddha. On other occasions he could in high glee get down on the floor and roll the dice with the boys for he loved African golf with a Bill Street fervor. So that was <laughs> the the mayor. Let's see some more. He was for many dizzy, splendiferous ears, immune to the more serious forms of criticisms, which in other times would have ruined any man in public life. And uh, uh, Father Nick Boker, his pockets full of new money and his innards full of nightclub champagne was more than tolerant to Jimmy. At dinners, parades, luncheon and rallies, the band played his old songs. Will you love me in December as you do in May, which Jimmy had written as a young man, and then Jimmy, the spirit of New York, would appear to charm the crowd. Jimmy was of New York, and to the country it typified its gaudiness, smartness and insouciance insouciance to perfection. He was born on June 19, 1881 in Leroy Street, Greenwich Village, the son of William H. Walker, a lumber dealer and local political power who had been born in Ireland. Jimmy went to St. Francis Xavier and then to New York Law School for three years. He fiddled around with songwriting, banking, promotion schemes and whatnot and decided to enter politics. He was elected to the State Assembly in 1909 and served there under the wing of Alfred E. Smith, who already had been in the Assembly for eight terms. His Republican opponent, Fiorello Laguardia, attacked Tammany and Walker all the way down the line. Tammany Hall was the place where everything was decided in New York. So there are a lot of books, a lot of things to read about this Tammany Hall and what happened in New York. Uh, like uh, something you can see it in uh, Gangs of New York, the movie and the book uh, itself. The book was written in uh, 1925, so it's something to read. La Guardia was on the right track, but he didn't have all his proofs nailed down. And the people of New York in those gaudy days were in no mood for reform. Walker swamped La Guardia. And Walker beat the governor to it by resigning on September the 1st, 1932, because there was something against him at the very end. So he resigned on 1932. And this, is, this was the... The mayor, New York, remembers him with a sneaking affection mingled with contempt that a man of such gift should have allowed himself to become hopelessly entangled. So that's a, uh, a profile of Jimmy Walker, the 
mayor of New York during the gaudy days of the clubs and was this profile has been written by Stanley Walker who uh, joined the staff of New York Herald Tribune as a reporter and a rewrite man in 1920 become became a night city editor in 1926 and served as city editor from 1928 to 1935 and the book I'm reading was written by Stanley Walker in 1933 so we got here first and impressions of what was going on and and now we will see how things changed from cabaret to hocha meaning from a, a cabaret to the hot clubs that were in new york at the very beginning of the teens and uh, most of the genuinely genuinely great masters of entertainment of the pre prohibition period are dead now or like George Rector and J. Jax Bustanobai are in quiet backgrounds. These men, together with such persons as John and Thomas Shanley and John Reisenweber, built their reputations on the solid foundation of good food and tasteful presentations. This type of nightlife, the cabaret period, began as far back as 1911, when the brothers Bastanobai astounded everybody by giving Dancing with Supper. 1911, Dancing with Supper. The cabaret found the going tough. It was being smirched by a cheaper and less leisurely life. After 1919, there were hardly cabaret in the old sense, although the term continued in use until the late twenties. The new nightlife came rapidly after prohibition. The nightclub was being born. Rectors became the Café de Paris and the Folie Berger entertained great hordes of people nightly. A man of vision named Jules Ansaldi gets most of the credit for the idea of combining the old high-class cabaret restaurant with a team of featured dancers and to form a place with a restricted exclusive membership. Jules Ansaldi. So they say uh, Italian background passing through France. And well, now let's listen to the Harlem Express. Jimmy Lansford Orchestra, live, 1946, a radio broadcast from Casa Manana, and the song is Caldonia. <laughs> Baby, she's got great big feet. Long lady, lady, they had enough to eat. But she's my baby, and I love her just the same. Crazy about that woman called Caledonia is her name. Caledonia, Caledonia, what makes your big head so hard? But I love you, love you just the same. Crazy about that woman called Caledonia is her name. I was naked with my baby and looked at too high. The brought her round a waist, had to brought her round a thigh. But I love her, love her just the same. Crazy about that woman called Caledonia, is her name. Caledonia, Caledonia, what makes your
right, all right. What a power. What a power. 1946, one year before Jimmy Lansford passed suddenly and sadly. And that's another story we were talking about. And it was a Jimmy Lansford Orchestra, the Harlem Express, in, uh, from a live radio broadcast, live in uh, the Casa Manana, 1946, Caledonia. And now let's move to 1950 with the great Lucky Millionaire Orchestra, who said the shorty wasn't coming back. Hip! That was a guy about 40 They called him Shorty Kind of guy Who rambled around Until the fellas got together Decided whether They should run Shorty Out of town oh, Shorty had to go Let me tell you about Shorty, Shorty had to go. Cause the fellas got together and decided it was better All the guys called a meeting and took a vote And that was all for Shorty Road They wanted satisfaction so they went into action And ran for Shorty out of town Poor Shorty had to go Let me tell you about Shorty, Shorty had to go. They had to have some action cause they wanted satisfaction Poor Shorty they took rag mops, clothes flops, ash cans, dish pans, beat poor Shorty all over his head. They ran him muddy what? till he was bloody. No! I knew poor Shorty was almost dead. Knew poor Shorty was almost dead. They ran him down the railroad track, but he laughed out loud and said, I'll be back. <laughs> the gals call on their pals to get enough dough to bring Shorty back. They had a rally what? out in the alley. Yeah. They took up dollars in a Kroger stack. stack. Now the guys in town shake their heads in pity. Shorty's been elected the mayor of the city. He told them when they ran him down the railroad track, he said, I'll be back in a Cadillac. I'll be back in a Cadillac fish tail. Fish tail. The great Lucky Millinder Orchestra, 1950, who said Shorty wasn't coming back. And now let's. Listen to the great Staff Smith and his Onyx Boys, 1936, of all the jazz violinists, the one who could probably have defeated most saxophonists or trumpeters in battles was the exciting Staff Smith. He started on violin when he was seven, and he was a great, a great gifted player. He was playing with Alfonso Trent, a legendary territory band during the late 20s. And then he led some groups in Buffalo, New York. And in 36, his sextet, along with Cozy Cole on drums and Jonah Jones on trumpet, the, both of them were later with Keb Calloway. He stayed there at the Onyx Club on 52nd Street for several years and the band was renamed the onyx boys uh he wanted one one uh, peculiarity of the band was that he wanted all the music players in the band to be high before starting to play high means alcohol and marijuana if they if he got advice that some of them was not high at, during the intermission, he forced them or him to drink and smoke. And that's the reason why at the very end, Cozy Cole, that was a straight man, accepted uh, um, an offer that was in, in, in the years repeated by Cab Calloway to join him. 
he didn't want to join the big band because he he was free with a small combo to do to to have more room for him not like in a big band but at the very end he said okay i'm i'm tied up i'm tired i'm uh, i'm fed up with all this drinking and smoking so now let's listen to a song from 1936 it ain't right the way you treat me it ain't right What you do for me It ain't right So don't be untrue to me It ain't right So baby, baby, baby Mama, I'm talking It ain't love That you handed out to me It ain't love Now don't start to shout to me It ain't love So baby, farewell Oh, goodbye Now I go on But what's the use You have killed my golden goose From now on I'm on the deuce Come to revolution for me It ain't right No, it ain't right, no, no Mama, don't do that, you know it ain't right Yes, boy, boy Staff Smith and his Onyx boys, it ain't right, the way you treat me, it ain't right, so baby, farewell. Okay, let's proceed with the reading of the nightclub era by Stanley Walker, a book written in 1933. So, uh, Prohibition was on in uh, 1919, and uh, the Depression, 10 years later, was on, but not in Harlem, where business is great so what happened when the prohibition came the real nightclubs began to reach their full development in 1924 when they began springing up around town in great profusion there was nothing crude about most of them except the manner in which they extorted money from their guests some of them were run by high-toned people and were exceedingly swanky There were other sorts, all sorts. Larry Fay, the horse-faced racketeer, opened El Fay and Fay's Follies with Texas Guinan as an entertainer. She greeted customers with her cheery, Hello, suckers! And the customers seemed to like it. If a man wanted to throw away a lot of money and a great many men appeared to be obsessed with that idea at the time, Face Club was an almost perfect place to do it. The nightclub had a curious and diverse appeal. Diverse appeal. To some, it was a sex exciter. To others, frequenting a nightclub and throwing away money was a form of exhibitionism. Then, too, a great many Americans, New Yorkers included, always have had only the most vague elementary notions of what constitutes a good time. 
Wealthy men from out of town visited the clubs for appalling orgies of spending and drinking, and most of them seemed to think it was worth the cost. At its best, the nightclub, in all sense, was a poor imitation of the old-time spacious, clean-aired cabaret. At its worst, at its worst, it was horrible, a hangout for thugs, cadets, porch climbers, pickpockets, alphawits, jewel thieves, professional maimers, yegmen, ex-convicts, and, in its later days, adults uh, at kidnapping or the snatch racket. The nightclub, at its worst and most flamboyant, had a direct connection with crime. It had its very origin in this in this rep this this respect for the prohibition law. Instantly, it appealed the, to the criminal as a source of business. The record is pretty, and we will read it about this record later, starting from the club shanty. Okay, I want to read you one more. The record is pretty. The club Shanti, destroyed by fire in 1926, was operated by Richard Rees Whitmore and his gang of thieves and murderers. Whitmore, who was hanged for murder in Baltimore, had with him, either as waiters or other employees at the club, such thieves as the redoubtable Shuffles Goldberg and Anthony Paladino, and the two Kramer boys, Jake and Leon, recognized in the underworld as the greatest safe crackers in history. Some of the gang are dead now, 1933, and others are in jail, but while they are the chanty, they had the chanty, it was a grand place for a man to take his wife or his sweetheart. So because that was, that was the point, ladies and gentlemen. What happened before the Italian Americans and Jews from escaping from Russia or Germany arrived in uh, in the states, not all in New York, but in other uh, cities or towns of uh, the states, and opened their clubs. They they were used to deal with women, while the other club owners that were most of them were from Ireland, for example didn't accept women women in the in the club so the, it was just for men and they were just they were club for men but in the in the worst exception the worst type of places where knives and knives and everything was were ready to fly every moment and uh, the the pavement was uh, the floor was uh, terrible and it, it was it was not allowed so th there really was something dirty really i mean dirty in the in the worst exception while whilst uh, those italian americans and jews that then had a great success with clubs i've i've read you some names they set everything in order to have women inside and those women had to be safe in every moment for example the bouncers had to throw back men who arrived without women because that would mean troubles and troubles send the money away so that was the reason why those clubs were so successful and you can uh, even uh, uh, see a lot of a lot of uh, reproductions in movies in the late uh, made in the in the 70s in the 80s like the movie cotton club and so on and uh, that's it that's it and now let's go listen to a great song from 56 shiny stockings from the Calum Basie orchestra a song written by the great frank foster and this is a personal redo of the Billy Bros Swing Orchestra from the record A Swing in Love Fest with the great Miss Norma Miller.
Yes, 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 the Bailey Bros Swing Orchestra. 2016 December, Shiny Stockings. The record is a swing love fest with the great late Miss Norma Miller. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to All That Swing by Big Daddy. Music, culture, and history. And uh, during this uh, 21st episode, we've been uh, reading something, some excerpts from the book The Nightclub Era of Stanley Walker, written in 1933, and we proceed on the next episodes. And uh, this program, composed by 36, a total of 36 episodes, is part of the Swing European Project, co-financed by the European Union. And uh, the Italian Swing Dance Academy, who I am a board member, represents Italy in this project with 13 partners from 11 different countries, a project based on the mobility of artists in Europe. And now let's close this episode with the great band by the name of Mighty Blue Kings from Chicago. The band was formed in 1995 by Ron Bond, and in uh, 97 they had their first album, Meet Me in Uptown, and we're gonna listen from their second album, what uh, was out in 97 at the same time, and it's called Come One, Come All, a particular song that is called Long Distance Lover. So long.
baby. 